and welcome back to AWS reInvent. We are here streaming live at the Venetian in the Sands Expo Hall. My name is Nikki and I'm a technical evangelist for AWS and I'm joined by Viva, Mike, and Randall. We're going to talk to you about two of the launches this, that happened this morning, Am uh, Amazon Personalize and Amazon Forecast. Before we talk about them though, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves and tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Vaibhav Sethi. I'm the product manager on Amazon Personalize. I'm Mike Pyland. I'm the CTO of RB Media and Recorded Books. We make audiobooks and uh, digital distribution media platform. I'm Randall, and I'm uh, just a software engineer person that they grabbed on stage at the last second. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, before we talk about the launches today, let's talk briefly about the typical challenge that our customers face with building their own custom models. Yeah, so if you uh, think about personalization, it's a fairly hard machine learning problem. Uh, there's several challenges in it. Uh, first is that the intent of the users keeps evolving. So they might be uh, buying something for themselves most of the time, but in a certain session, they're trying to buying a, buy a gift for somebody. So that's normally a hard thing uh, to model with naive approaches. There's also the issue of the popularity trap with personalization. So unless you're very careful uh, with building your models, you end up showing popular items to most of your users. So that feels like personalization, it's not really personalization. Uh, a very uh, important challenge is that of cold start. Yeah. Uh, so oftentimes uh, our customers have issues where uh, they're adding new items to their catalog. So you don't have a lot of historical information of how the users are interacting with those items. Uh, more importantly, you might have a lot of your traffic which is anonymous users. So you again don't have historical information about those users. Uh, and you might also have new users all the time. So cold start is a, again a very hard uh, machine learning problem to tackle with naive approaches to personalization. Uh, and then there's a scale issue. So yeah. personalization typically needs to work over very large catalogs, over user histories which are fairly big. Uh, so getting that uh, to a performant model which can give uh, uh, results back in order of milliseconds is a pretty hard problem. Uh, so we see several customers who attempt this, but uh, oftentimes the challenges tend to be really big uh, in building custom models for personalization. And uh, there's obviously the known challenges of getting the data in, managing the pipelines, versioning the models. Right. Uh, all of the, that is true across domains. Uh, what I mentioned previously is true specifically for personalization. How does AWS make machine learning more accessible to developers and businesses? So with, with Personalize, what we have done is that we have essentially reduced the problem uh, for our customers to just giving us the data. Uh, we provide several simple APIs uh, with, which help you to ingest the data. From there on, we take care of the whole of the machine learning part, the whole of the hosting of the machine learning models part. Uh, it makes it usable by an average developer. So an average developer with Amazon Personalize uh, has really the, uh, the distilled distilled knowledge we have from uh, operating personalization for many decades uh, in a managed service. Fairly easy to get started, couple of hours you can get good personalization results. Let's take a step back for our viewers. What is Amazon Personalize? I know you just launched it this morning. Andy Jassy announced it at his keynote. Can you give us a brief overview of what it is, what it does, and uh, how it's helping our customers? Sure, so Amazon uh, Personalize is a real-time uh, recommendation and personalization service. Uh, as I said before, it embeds a lot of our learnings from operating personalization on Amazon.com, Audible, Kindle, a lot of other properties, uh, makes it available as a managed service for our customers. Uh, there's no ML expertise required for using uh, no ML Amazon. No expertise required. Yeah, that's an important point. Yeah. For using Amazon Personalize. Uh, I would say there's four main use cases. Yeah, uh, I was going to ask you, what, yeah. what do you see as the most common use cases? Yeah, so a very common use case is to generate the right list of items uh, or products you might want to recommend to your users. So if a user is coming to your landing page, is browsing some product details, yeah. uh, you often want to generate some visual experience which uh, gives them the right recommendations. So so that is where we so see for this. for an e-commerce site. Yeah, e-commerce, uh, he's going to talk about how he applied <laughs> to it. Uh, it. It could really be a video on demand service, uh, even some B2B businesses. Yeah. Anything could be an item, you could recommend anything. Uh, in fact, what we see is that users typically now expect all of the touch points they have with businesses to be personalized. Uh, so Amazon Personalize can be used for that. The other use cases we see is uh, for search uh, personalization. So 
always a good idea to show search results which are more relevant uh, to a user rather than generic results. Uh, you can also do uh, personalized promotional notifications and personalized promotional emails uh, with Amazon Personalize. Wow. Um, I heard you have a demo for me or a video that you want to show. Yeah. Can we see it in action? Yeah, sure. Let's, go let's for watch it. it. Let's see. All right, so this is the console for yeah. Amazon Personalize. Uh, I'm just going to click get started here. Yeah. Uh, the first concept here is a data set group. I give it a name. I'm now going creating a schema for the data set to be imported. Okay. Uh, so in this particular demo, the data set is uh, interactions between users and items. So there's an item ID, user ID, there's a timestamp for the particular interaction. Uh, the data set I have used is uh, MovieLens, so it's a rating, uh, rating interactions. Uh, in Ratings? this step, I'm creating, yeah. In this step, I'm creating an import job, just adding some permissions for the data to be ingested. Uh, just and in, then it's now just going to go through. Yeah. So the data is ingested now. Now we can do something called as a train solution. Uh, so that's uh, that. Think of it as something like an algorithm, but more than that, it does featureization, uh, metric generation, and all of that. Uh, so this step, I'm creating a solution. I've give it, given it a name. Uh, I'm selecting a particular recipe uh, to train the solution with. Uh, this particular re recipe is a sequential models. Uh, a model this works really well uh, in generating high quality recommendations. So I did uh, create solution. The solution was created. It is active now. It was really fast. Uh, yeah, yeah, so this is a recorded demo. <laughs> uh, so then I go to, uh, I can see the metrics of how the solution looked. So there's some uh, ranking metrics we generate. Uh, you saw that previously. Now I'm trying to get inference, so actually get recommendations from the solution. Okay. So that is through a create campaign. Uh, so I created a campaign here. Right. If I see the details of a campaign, I uh, get this uh, campaign arm, yeah. uh, which is, um, something which I'm going to use in my code to actually get the recommendations from this particular campaign. This is a CLI example. You could use this in Python, Java, anything you like. Uh, personalized runtime is a surface. Out, okay, so it's yeah, just so I just that gave JSON. it a user ID, which is 458, uh, 450 in this situation. And then it returns JSON. It returned uh, the list of uh, movies that this particular user is uh, going to like. I change the user ID, I get different set of recommendations. So you could embed this in your code and get started with personalization very yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's super easy so we, to integrate it with existing applications. Yeah, we do have a question Netflix. from one of our uh, Twitch users here, from uh, Tessa Katal. I don't know how to say your name, I apologize. But how do you determine what the appropriate recipe to select for your use case is? And I'll extend that, which is, how are those use cases, or how are those recipes loaded in? And, and can you create your own and load your own in? Sure. So we have uh, several kinds of recipes. So one kind is uh, user personalization. So uh, an example of that recipe uh, in Amazon personalizes uh, a recipe called HRNN. That stands for Hierarchical Recurrent Neural Nets. Uh, that particular recipe looks at the, the history of the user, the interaction between the users and uh, the items. Uh, tries to predict the items which are more likely uh, to be interacted by uh, for that particular user. So if you're trying to, let's say, populate a landing page uh, with a list of item recommendations for a given user. Let's say they log into your application. You want to have this, this ten top ten items that they you want to want them to see. You would use a recipe like HRNN. Uh, there is another recipe called SIMS, which stands for similar items. Uh, that recipe essentially picks items which are similar to a given item. So let's say you're browsing for a new MacBook. You click on a MacBook. It will show you uh, computers which are similar uh, to a MacBook. And are these using you, you know, kind of the industry standard algorithms, things like singular value decomposition, or you know, uh, creating vector maps and stuff, or is it is it just custom algorithms on the back end? So the the algorithms in uh, Amazon Personalize are proprietary to Amazon Personalize, uh, but it's a, it's a really extensible service. So uh, so if I wanted to bring my own algorithm, you can do that. Okay. Yeah. So that's awesome. So while it's really usable without ML expertise. Uh, we feel that ML experts are going to really like this service too, because it really takes the the grunt work out of you know building a personalization system out. Right. If you are an algorithm expert, use the service, bring your own algorithms. Uh, we can take that in. It's usable as a native algorithm once ingested. Mike, have you guys at RV Media already started playing with it? How easy to get is it to get started? How did you like using it? 
It's, uh, it's been awesome, actually. We were in the beta, obviously, so uh, we did have some issues with uh, rights and things like that, but right. outside of that, uh, everything's worked really well. Uh, we loaded up our own data, and within three weeks, we had results back, and we were seeing that matching. Even though we didn't load up full data set on our books, we were getting back matches based on the same genre and things like that. I was at a board meeting a month ago, and they're like, if that thing brings back romance to me, uh, the thing's worthless, and, <laughs> and we, we tested it out and we're seeing it in real life, and we're seeing a dramatic increase in, in books that we would actually like to check out. So it's been awesome from that point of view. So when it goes GA, do you see implementing it moving forward? Yes, absolutely. And you're, you're thinking that you guys are going to run with some of the built-in algorithms, or you're going to bring your own, or a mix of both? Um, actually, we're going to we're going to use a, a mix of a couple different algorithms for different purposes. So the Sims, if you pull up a book, we're going to want books like that book. Uh, so that's real simple for that model. But uh, the real personalization and the power and the value that we're going to get out of this really comes from that that personalized experience. Finding people that are like that person and bringing out the books that they've read. Uh, that, that that patron has not read yet. Uh, so we do do some filtering in the middle, we get back a result set, we take away uh, in our own API the books that they've already uh, looked at and anything that's not available or owned uh, from, from the library itself. So a uh, little bit of manipulation in the middle, but uh, this is dramatically different than what we've done in the past as far as speed and, and effort on our side. Do you think it, it saves time on the developer side as well? So e even if you're a developer, but you're not necessarily familiar with uh, machine learning and, and uh, the different algorithms that one might use in order to get these kind of recommendations. Do you think it's really kind of allowing those developers to build the same API and pipeline that they would need to if they didn't have a data science background or an ML background? It's, it, it's a huge difference. And no, you don't need a data scientist. I actually have uh, one working for me. Uh, and I've worked with him quite a bit, uh, but I haven't gotten the results in the time period that I wanted. Now, within one week, with the new interface and stuff, we could load up and have a recommendation engine working in a week, pipe that into our APIs, and be functional. We spent a couple of months doing that work that we could do in less than a week now um, to manipulate a search engine to basically try and pull back what we needed. Uh, so this is dramatically different. I love hearing that from customers. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever we have a chance to remove undifferentiated heavy lifting, we try our best to make that happen. So I, I'm glad to hear that we were able to get rid of some of that for you. That's exactly why what when Andy announced it this morning that everyone with? clapped. Yep. <laughs> Quick question. Yeah. What programming languages will the API be available in or is available in? So Python, Java, Node. You Python. can uh, use it. We are planning to support all the popular uh, languages to case that database supports the disservice. And awesome. when, you, when you say the Python, the, these languages, it, it looked like earlier there was a custom SDK or something. Is that is that part of the service, or is it built into our standard SDKs, like Bodo and uh, the Java SDK? So at, at this moment for preview, it is not a part of Bodo. But when we go GA, it's going to be a part of Bodo. OK. So no, no additional steps required for installation of anything. Ah, uh, that's really nice. I, I just want to throw a shout out to, to Boto3, which is the best SDK that we have. Uh, no offense to any of the other SDKs, which are also amazing. I don't agree with you, but that's okay. That's a side note. I think we got a question from Java One Guy. What attributes are required in the training data? So the only uh, data set we really require uh, mandatory is the user item interaction data. So at a minimum, we require uh, a user ID. Yeah. an item ID, uh, and interaction between them. So if it's, let's say you're just interested in clicks, uh, just the timestamp of those clicks. But that's the minimum. You can have multiple kinds of events in there. So you can have purchase, clicks, uh, likes of a video, uh, anything you can think of really. Uh, in addition, there is metadata models, uh, which can take user demographic data, uh, item data such as brand of an item, color of a shoe, right. things like that. So uh, but we have a question from ABOM TV, which says, uh, "We're feeding it. Should we be feeding in multiple events, such as a user viewed an item, or user bought a product, and user disliked a product?" And I guess if I were able to rephrase that question, it's, "What can developers do to their existing applications to generate the data that would make uh, this work better?" Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So uh, we have an integration with uh, AWS Amplify. Uh, so Already. With yeah, well, wow. <laughs> you have to take a couple of steps to enable it because we are still in preview. Uh, but at GA, we will. 
um, and it still works. Uh, you can use AWS Amplify to send events directly from your browser uh, to us. Wow. If you are already collating events on the server side, uh, let's say you already have events coming in through a Kinesis stream, you can read the data from there, uh, send it to us on the server side as well. Uh, and it's really up to uh, the developer and their business problem on what events they think are salient for the personalization. Uh, it's their choice to send those events to us, but we can handle multiple kinds of events. So really quickly, you also launched Amazon Forecast today. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it before we have to wrap? Yeah, so Amazon uh, Forecast is a service uh, cut pretty much in the same cloth. We are uh, really making it easy for uh, enterprises to have accurate forecasts. Uh, taking away all the complexity of machine learning, also taking away all the complexity of managing the data pipelines, the retraining and everything. Uh, Amazon uh, Forecast comes with several proprietary algorithms, uh, which have been, uh, in our test, they have sh uh, shown to be much more accurate than uh, uh, what customers have available uh, otherwise. Uh, and it's all, again, via API, easy to integrate with any other downstream system uh, that customers might be using. So both services are available in preview today? Yes. And how can uh, our customers sign up? Oh, yeah, so the customers, uh, you can go to our landing page. You will see a, a bright button there asking you to fill up a form for preview. Just give us the details. We are going to have a look at it, and we will try to whitelist you as soon as possible. Are they? Are these services a part of the free tier, or will they be a part of the free tier? There is no charge for using these services uh, during the preview. Uh, at launch, obviously, we are going to be charging for these. Uh, but there is a free trial with both these services for uh, first two months. Uh, there's some usage limits for which you get uh, to, uh, to try the service for free. So we awesome. have a number of questions from the stream around from uh, people like, uh, yeah, I can't read their usernames, I'm sorry. They were asking a little bit more about the, the privacy situation with the data. And uh, I know that we have a pretty robust privacy policy for all of our different services, and I was hoping you could speak to that a little bit. Yeah, so both with Amazon Personalize and Amazon Forecast, your data is your property. Right. The, the models which are trained from this data are exclusively used for that customer only. Uh, oh, nothing wow. else. Uh, the data is encrypted as well. Uh, follows all the safeguards uh, that we have for other database services too. And I think that's an important note about all of our ML services is that, you know, one of the things that we try to do at AWS is be customer obsessed. And that means uh, earning your trust by never ever you know, using your data in a way that you would not want us to. So we, right. we take that very seriously and, and you can, you know, I think over the course of several years we have proven that we, we kind of do a good job there. It's demonstrated across all of our services and everything that we launch. And you know, I wanted to speak one quick note about Forecast. Uh, Colm, uh, who's a, one of our senior principal engineers, he went on Twitter recently and talked about uh, the difficulties of forecasting. So with forecasting, you, you have um, a number of different vectors for the way that your timelines are moving. So you'll have uh, you know, amplitudes that could change on a, on a temporal basis of uh, weekly or daily or hourly right. or minute-wise. And then you'll have uh, other vectors where you'll have spikes. Mm -hmm. And these spikes could be around holidays. They could be around uh, specific events like reInvent, you know, we generate a lot of network traffic for Vegas uh, and we install all kinds of really cool networking gear in this building and get good stuff done. But you also have this other aspect of a uh, of, of, of vector which is a gradual increase that happens as your product grows. And most uh, time series forecasting systems struggle coping with those different vectors, pulling the, time, the, the forecasting metric in different directions. So you, you don't necessarily capture that you know, 5% uh, weekly increase. You only capture the periodic stuff. And you know, one of the ways you can do that, you can do like a fast for, uh, you can do a Fourier transform to, trans, uh, to transfer the, uh, the graph that's you know, in one amplitude over on its side and separate out the periods for when you have increased stuff. Uh, and this service, doesn't require you to do any of that math or write any of this data science or open up some a Jupyter notebook and write it all. You just kind of say, hey, this is my data. This is my time series data. Tell me what I should do. Yeah. So it also eliminates the need for any machine learning expertise. I, or even data science, really. It's, it's a really powerful construct. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today to talk about Amazon Personalize and Amazon Forecast. Uh, we don't have any more questions. Thank you. We will see you soon. Thank you. All right, see you soon, guys.
Bye. Thanks.